I guess it really is a small world after all. In my last video, I discussed how technically there are various land masses around the world with native inhabitants who generally inhabit areas extremely disparate from these new lands that they settled in, which were previously completely untouched by human hands, such as ancient Austronesians from Indonesia settling in Madagascar, the largest island in Africa, or Quakers settling in some remote islands in Colombia, or the Dutch settling in islands all the way across the world in the Indian Ocean. However, this is rather uncommon on the world stage, considering that Homo sapiens proper have been inhabiting most of Eurasia for many tens of thousands of years, and demographic fluctuation has always been the one constant throughout human history. And when you're talking about layers upon layers upon layers of migration, replacement, intermixing, divergence, things start to become extremely convoluted and almost impossible to thoroughly map out or quantify. I've seen many simple maps of human migration throughout history, and some of them are more detailed than others, some only concern the movement of haplogroups, and these are all really great resources, but none were quite as detailed as I would have liked. And similar to my ethno-racial maps of the world from the past couple years, because I couldn't find any map that truly satisfied me, I decided to create my own. So, just as with the emergence and evolution of different species on Earth throughout the past few billion years, we've also seen the evolution of different groups of people in the past couple hundred thousand, and it's incredibly difficult to classify them into separate groupings because of intermixing, but as I've discussed in the past, you can generally see at least four distinct genetic clusters for all human beings, and you can divide further and further into more specific and arbitrary clusters. Chances are, if you're watching this video, at least some of your recent ancestors migrated from somewhere else other than from your immediate vicinity, and when you go back far enough, it's a certainty that they did. But there's more than simply the obvious, such as the more recent migrations we've seen across the globe in the past half millennia. Now, generally speaking, when looking at history, whenever a group of migrants arrives in a disparate area with a low population density and ample conditions, their fertility rate typically spikes when compared to those back in their original homeland, which could be caused by a variety of factors. For instance, the Quebecois population, numbering several million today, is believed to be mostly descended from a relatively small original founding population from various parts of France of a few thousand individuals. And likewise, European immigrants on the western frontier of the United States also multiplied extremely quickly, namely the Mormons, with the majority of the two million Mormons in Utah being descended from a group of pioneers who made the trek into the desolate area in the 1800s. Another notable example would be the dispersion of Austronesian migrants from Taiwan into Southeast Asia, as although there are only a few hundred thousand Austronesians in Taiwan today, their descendants in Southeast Asia and around the world number in the hundreds of millions, proving that the migrants to the south had a far higher rate of reproduction than those who stayed behind. Although it's worth noting that they did also intermix with some of the natives who were already there. So I will say that the lines showing migration on my map are not always to scale in terms of numbers of migrants or their descendants or the paths they took. Also, intermixing between different groups is not always shown and it does oversimplify the complex relation between Northwest and Southwest Eurasians, for example, but let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, I only differentiated 16 different human clusters for migration patterns throughout the world even though you could say that there are many, many more clusters, but these are the groups that have traversed huge swaths of land, sometimes even ending up in the most bizarre and unexpected of places. Starting with Africa, this was the first continent I tackled, so I wasn't quite as detailed as some of the others, but I chose to highlight four clusters of Sub-Saharan origin, that being West African Niger Congo speakers, East African Nilotes, sub-equatorial archaic hunter-gatherers who are essentially the first major branch to split off from humanity, and lastly Horn Africans, who are a mix of East African Nilotes and ancient migrants of Western Eurasian origin. When looking at migration into and within Africa, there are clearly many layers of migration in the continent consisting of these very different looking Africans. But the first major migration consisted of sub-equatorial hunter-gatherers such as the Khoisan moving south, 
predominantly settling in Southeast Africa, in modern Mozambique, South Africa, Namibia, and Botswana, while the pygmies settled predominantly in the jungles of the Congo, as well as parts of East Africa. The Nilotes spread out from the Sudan region into West Africa and down south into East Africa, intermixing with Eurasians to form the Horn Africans, who also spread to the north and east, but surprisingly also pushed down south, with there being many groups such as the Maasai, Tutsi, and some Khoi tribes that have significant Cushitic admixture. However, by far the biggest movement of people in Africa would be from West Africa, with huge numbers of migrants starting around 2000 years ago pushing southeast in a movement known as the Bantu Expansion, and they intermixed with these other African peoples that they neighbored to varying degrees, with there only being small pockets of the hunter-gatherers remaining in the Congolese jungle and the Kalahari Desert. However, Africa has a truly impressive external migration or diaspora as well, with there being African descended communities in almost every single country in the Americas due to the colonial slave trade, but there were also smaller numbers that had entered the Middle East, North Africa, and South Asia through the Arab slave trade, and there is a much more recent movement into Western Europe. Speaking of, when looking at Europe, on my map, migration waves are focused predominantly on the movement of Indo-Europeans rather than more ancient movements, and you can tell how the Latin, Germanic, and Slavic peoples spread throughout the continent, with there also being a smaller movement of Northwest Eurasians into ancient North Africa, the Levant, and Anatolia. When zooming out and looking at the entire globe, it's pretty clear that Northwest Eurasians have by far the largest external migrations of any group in history, especially when looking at the Americas, with hundreds of millions of full or partial European ancestry throughout the continents, with smaller numbers having moved to Africa, Asia, and especially Oceania. By the way, the smaller movements of Northwest Eurasians into Iran and South Asia actually tracks the movement of the Proto-Indo-Iranians, with many other Indo-Europeans of the Eurasian steppe intermixing with migrants from Northeast Asia to become the mixed-race Central Asians we see today. So looking at Asia, it becomes quite clear that it may just have the highest degree of ancestral and phenotypic diversity of any continent, which is why I'm always hesitant to even use the term continent and prefer to describe the world in smaller geographic regions instead, as you have people of Middle Eastern, South Asian, East Asian, and European descent that have migrated across this landmass, creating a patchwork of different peoples and cultures. I attempted to show that South Asians are predominantly of archaic hunter-gatherer origin, who are most closely related to Oceanians, mixed with ancient migrants from the Middle East, and there has since been a large amount of migration between these two regions. South Asians have also migrated in large amounts historically to Southeast Asia back when the region was Hindu, with Burma, Cambodia, and parts of Thailand and Malaysia having a particularly high degree of South Asian admixture. There was also significant migration from Eastern Eurasia into South Asia, particularly in the east and on the fringes of the subcontinent, and the map also shows how Pacific Islanders like the Micronesians and Polynesians are of mixed Asian and Oceanian ancestry. Looking at the diaspora of South Asians, we can see that they also have quite the scattershot spread when it comes to where they settled, with one of the oldest migrant communities being the Romani in Europe, and the colonial age brought about South Asians in Southern and East Africa, such as Kenya, Uganda, the Mascarene Islands, and South Africa, as well as in Fiji, Malaysia, and the Guyanas, but the more recent major migrations are to Australia, New Zealand, the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. Concerning Southwest Eurasians, we can see that they have spread out across the Middle East and North Africa, with an old diaspora in South and Southeast Asia and East Africa, and we could also consider Jews to be a part of the Middle Eastern diaspora, seeing as to how European Jews are mixed between Middle Easterners and Europeans. More recent migrations of those from the Middle East include the massive numbers of Jews, Levantine Arabs, and Moors who settled in Latin America during Spanish rule, with the most recent migrant flows from this region being those in Western Europe, North America, and Australia. Other than Northwest Eurasians, the Eastern Eurasians quite possibly have one of the most widespread diasporas, having been the hub of human life for the past several thousand years, as I discussed in an older video over the demographic fluctuations over time. And technically, the Eskimo Aleut peoples of Northern America, the Pacific Islanders, and Central Asians all could be considered a part of the East Asian diaspora, considering they have partial ancestry from Asian migration within the past few thousand years. 
The more recent waves of Eastern Eurasian migration around the world include large communities forming in Oceania, including Australia, New Zealand, and Hawaii, and even larger numbers on both the east and west coasts of the United States and Canada, with smaller numbers in South America, Africa, Europe, and the Middle East. Now, I have Native Americans shown as being a mixture of ancient Northwest Eurasians and ancient East Asians, which is a bit of an oversimplification of the issue, since the ancient North Eurasian strain that has been found to be one of the two main founder lineages of Proto-Amerindians actually came from Central Asia, and although they did share a large amount of DNA with ancient and modern Europeans, phenotypically they probably would have been quite distinct from the people we see there today, considering this was at least 20,000 years ago. The Americas was definitely the most difficult map to cover since there is a very large number of mixed race individuals spread out over the continents and they didn't just originate and spread out from one community. So instead I have two circles representing mixed race Hispanics and mixed race Brazilians and it more or less shows the path that intermixing would have taken in the past during the colonial age, although it does show some elements of diaspora as well, particularly up north into the United States. It's quite interesting that even when you take away the map completely, you can still almost see the outlines of each continent from the migration patterns alone, which shows that, in my opinion, sometimes data regarding the world and humanity really can be quite mesmerizing and beautiful, considering every line and every arrow tells a different tale of the human story. I'd say this map covers about 50 to maybe 70% of the recent migrations of humanity, since we could always go more and more into specific details, like what if there's a Swedish guy who moved to the Sahara Desert and doesn't have an arrow to represent his migration path, and other semantics like that. There's always room for improvement, and I just might do that in the future, but I hope you found this map to be educating and fascinating, and I'll be sure to leave a download link in the description where you can check it out for yourself. And for today's poll, let me know where most of your ancestors originally came from. And as always, this has been Mason. Thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll see you next time.